Hey guys, I want to go down a conspiracy theory rabbit hole, and I don't think it's all that far fetched. Um, and I'll, let me know what you think. But uh, this all got kind of started from Sean Gordon Murphy, and if you weren't seeing all his tweets uh, yesterday, and I don't know, really this week, he's been saying a few things um, and sort of pushing back a little bit against those comic creators and i think you know who i'm talking about the ones that want to control what everyone says and thinks and uh you know they're uh, they want to be the gatekeepers they realize that they're not anymore um things have been changing you were right 2019 is the year things are changing so we're going to get into that but i just want to remind you that my comic book downcast is on indiegogo and we're doing really really great Right now we have 486 backers, so thank you everybody. If you haven't backed this yet, uh, this would be a great time to do it. I would really, really appreciate that. Um, we can get over 18,000 again, and um, that helps us out. The higher we can get, the then we can get on trending, and then we get more normies into it. So please consider backing. Thank you very much, and let's jump into this. All right, so Sean Gordon Murphy did several of these numbered tweet posts, long spiels uh but this is the one that sort of struck me i'm coming to realize that um twitter and, and a lot of you already know this but i've i've not been active on twitter it's one of those things like it makes sense for promotional reasons and i have been active on twitter since since october but before that i never used twitter i had a twitter account not even this twitter account i had a different one and i i followed a whole bunch of comic book pros and that's about it. I didn't do much with it at all. I, I think I posted like twice maybe on that Twitter account. But I'm coming to realize that Twitter is basically the public relations face of everything. And the sooner you figure that out, uh, the better. Some people use it specifically to cause problems, not for the sake of the problems themselves. Well, some people do, but uh, but they'll cause problems on Twitter specifically because of the attention that they get from it and it actually ends up being uh, it's just a way to get eyeballs on you and your stuff or whatever it is that you're trying to do because the way that twitter works it's being sent out to every anybody can see it it's not like there aren't walls in the way unless you're blocked <laughs> but it's not like facebook it's it's quite different in that regard um so anything that i say on twitter i've i've been realizing that anybody can see it Anybody out there can see it if they want to see it. So it does, it, it just makes you realize that your audience is a different set of people. Um, so Sean Gordon Murphy, he knows this. Um, I think a lot of people know this probably way before I realized it. So this is basically, he took a, he took a, I don't know, he was a smart route, I guess, from his uh, point of view to get pros that were upset with him to not be upset with him. And also maintain uh this kind of i don't know like good feelings i guess from fans that have been disenfranchised from comic book pros so this is interesting he says and to any pro who doesn't like what i'm saying the ones in the dm whisper chains and the ones subtweeting i only have just one thing to say congratulations you just won yourself a free drink and basically he's saying he's gonna win them over okay so many of you have already seen this now, I, I think that there's subtext here, and this is where I'm going to put on my tinfoil hat. Um, I think, and I can see a lot of shifting in public facing, especially Twitter, you're seeing it. Um, there's positioning. Something is changing. Pe everyone can smell this thing. Everyone can feel it changing. And that is the comic book industry of 2019. IDW's out of business. Uh, stores are in trouble. Many stores are in trouble. Uh, things aren't looking good, and a lot of people know it, even though they're they're not actually coming out and saying it. So, someone like Sean Gordon Murphy, let's say that things get so tough that uh, comic publishers are publishing much fewer comics. Someone like Sean Gordon Murphy, you think he's still going to have a job at Marvel or DC? Yes, of course he is. I, I would say he's probably considered one of the top talents um, in the industry. And so I think that he would be safe. However, is he going to prosper in those places? I mm, Do you think if Sean Gordon Murphy launched his own crowdfunding campaign 
or made his own publishing imprint and he did whatever it is that he wanted to do, do you think that he would personally make more money and have more creative uh, property basically to retire off of down the road? It's becoming more and more and more that working for mainstream publishers doesn't really make sense. If you're working for a page rate, that's great. You're working on characters that you've always wanted to work on and you love and since your childhood, that's great. But what do you get in return? And I think a lot more people are realizing that this is the case. It's a dead end. So I believe there's going to be more comic book pros and we're not even talking about comics gate here. Uh, according to them, they're treating comics gate like it's over. And if you are comics gate, you have to realize you've won. This means you won initially the goal. I think for a lot of people <laughs> that were revolting against the industry was that they wanted comic book pros to act like professionals. They wanted them to recognize the fans and to treat people with respect. Now, if more comic book pros are doing this, um, then ultimately that's that's a victory, right? I believe it's a victory. Now, the nice thing here for consumers is the more comic book pros that jump into doing their own thing, that means they rely on you. They rely on the reader, the consumer. You are the one that pays their bills. Therefore, they have to tone down any ideolo ideological uh, motivating factors. They have to tone down their rhetoric and yeah, they have to be nice. I just think that Sean Gordon Murphy realizes this. <laughs> and he's he's uh, taking the bull by the horns. Um, you know, and I'm sure a lot of this has to do with temperament and, and all that kind of stuff too. But um, yeah, th there's definitely, there's some s subtext here. Y this isn't a tweet that you just randomly in a, in a moment push out. This, these are long. I mean, well, this one I'm only seeing two. But <laughs> most of his has been, have been numbered up to like 12. Um, and so... Yeah, he's these have been planned out. He knows what he's doing. Um, he's been very diplomatic about what he's saying. People are realizing, even Joe Casada is realizing that there's a new game in town. Here's the Draw and Drink YouTube channel, and Joe Casada is part of that Draw and Drink YouTube channel. I uh, have actually this showed up in my notifications, um, and I'd never I thought it was somebody's channel. I, I don't know. I didn't know what it was. But if you look in here, that is Joe Casada, actually, um, and he's on YouTube. And I don't know why it surprised me. Apparently, this has been going on for a while. Maybe all of you were like, "Well, yeah, duh." Um, I'm the, the world of comics is is really small, and a lot of comics creators are on YouTube. And I even think right now, I've got professional comic book uh, people that watch my videos. They never comment. I know that they're out there. Um, I like to think that there's there's this thing where if you're drawing all the time, especially for artists, you're always working drawing. Um, you got to entertain yourself somehow, and you feel the camaraderie. You know, we all feel it too. You pop on YouTube and you watch what's going on in the world of comics. It's entertaining. There's drama. There's you know all the kind of stuff you can watch other people draw. Things like that. Not only that, but there's just a massive audience of people that you can tap into, and so it doesn't surprise me at all that uh, this this little channel is trying to grow. I need to watch some episodes before I can form an opinion. But if it's drawing and drinking, you know, go for it. Um, still, still a pretty small channel. They only have, you know, 600 and a half subscribers. But uh, this is, again, things are shifting. So what about Scott Snyder? He also posted this. Brother, Greg Capullo pitched me an idea for a creator own a creator owned that means a creator owned comic and i cannot stop thinking about it all right he floated that idea he floated that idea to scott snyder and it's not just about oh here's a great idea i want to do it i i think that's what it used to be about i think there there used to be like you had no creative outlet to do this other thing um and i wouldn't have been surprised if scott snyder was there when he started doing creator owned stuff but now they're seeing that there's it, it makes more sense financially to do creator owned stuff so this is going to change. Things are going to change for Marvel. I had heard that Scott Snyder is planning on doing a crowdfunding campaign of his own at some point. I would assume it's Kickstarter. I have no idea, though, because I have never seen 
I, I tried to find something online about it, never found anything that definitively said he was going to be doing a Kickstarter or Indiegogo or anything. But I am finding stuff about creator owned stuff, and that's no surprise. Here's more. A lot of that is through Image Comics, and this is the big thing. If Scott Snyder went to crowdfunding, that would make a huge statement because any day of the week, if Scott Snyder goes into Image Comics and he tells them he has a creator-owned property, they're absolutely going to publish it. He's going to have distribution. He's going to have any of the benefits that come with having a publisher and the best of those benefits. If he crowdfunds, that's a totally different matter. That means something else. And, and it's not that he wouldn't have a publisher. It's just that crowdfunding has the 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 potential of making you a huge chunk of change in a small amount of time and then when you publish all of that those just the cells residual kind of stuff it just it just keeps popping for you that's fine but having that big lump sum up front it's starting to make sense to a lot more people uh, including scott snyder problem is crowdfunding is not easy <laughs> it's not it's a lot of work and it takes a very specific set of skills. Even being uh, you know, a great or well-known comic book writer or comic book artist, that in and of itself does not make you have an extremely successful campaign. I'm, I'm thinking of Billy Tucci. He's, he's really, really spectacular. And it was really great to go on that stream with him on Alterna Comics. Um, really great to talk to him there. Um, and he's never been explicitly comics gate and again that's because you won <laughs> comics gate won the fact that comic book pros that are just they just want to get work are are looking to the indie world and trying to do things there that means that we've created a better environment we have shown that uh there's something better here and now also the nice thing about that is it means that you have the control as the consumer you have the power to decide who who does well, who fares well in in uh, indie comics, and who just doesn't. So you're going to see a lot more making nice. I don't know that uh, some creators can repair uh, what they have done, but they're still realizing that there's not much. I mean, creator owned is the way to go. So I got looking at Image Comics and realizing how many creators uh, have worked for Image, do work for Image that have already worked for big mainstream publishers and you know, they've possibly done pretty well, but at image, this is always what appealed to me. This is always what I liked about image is that you have the potential to make so much more and own your own stuff. You have so much more freedom. Uh, so that's nice. Um, but yeah, they're publishing all already proven winners for the most part, you know, <laughs> they, they don't, they're, they're, they don't always have it right. Uh, one of those creators though, I, I kind of got sucked in a rabbit hole is uh Marcelo Frusen. hope I said that right. He's actually, I had this conversation with Nacho Lazaro. He's the artist on downcast here. And, uh, the, Marcelo was his teacher. And so I started looking through some of his art and, uh, I can definitely see a huge, a huge influence um, he's his favorite artist and he is, he was his teacher. Uh, so it, anyway, it was really cool to see that just cause, uh, yeah, same, same kind of style that's uh, coming from Argentina. Really cool stuff. Anyway, to sum this up, I feel like I, I rambled a little bit there to sum this up. You're going to give you getting more comic book pros that are trying to, uh, walk this reasonable line because they know something is happening. If they can't walk this reasonable line, if something in their history, especially on Twitter, has prevented them from walking this line, they're gonna double down. <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna turn and and fall into the arms of the SJWs on one side, um, or they're gonna fall into the arms of I guess uh, conservatives on the other side. Um, Trying to trying to salvage something in the middle will be really interesting to see how that pans out because I haven't actually seen it full fledged kick into gear or any of that kind of thing, but you're seeing it, um, you know, on on one side with Mark Wade. Uh, it to me it totally looks like he could be preparing, to, he's preparing for anything, uh, but but sort of nestling down into that ideological uh, portion of comics and having that be your safety net. Or, uh, you know, 
come to comics gate and you know have that have that be your home or this third option which is try and keep all the fans that you possibly can and all the good connections uh so that you're positioned for the future who knows so let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd be really interested uh, to hear your thoughts on all of this. Am I just some crazy tinfoil hat person? Uh, is there something more to this? Did I miss something? And if you haven't back backed Downcast yet, it would be really, really great if you did. It's in the description below. Thanks. Bye.